welcome back everybody uh, this is class number two in new life in Christ and if you've come back to class number two uh, that is great uh, consistency is everything with this and so um, as I said there's going to be eight of these sessions they're fairly short and so that uh, um, you can uh, continue on with them and uh, so last time uh, we got started with things, really laid the foundation and talked about why the foundation is so important. And we talked about uh, what just happened to you. Uh, so uh, today we're going to step into the next one. If you've got your curriculum with you, you can open that. Remember, if you don't have the curriculum, you can right there on YouTube uh, is a blue link and uh, you can download it as the blanks that you can fill in. Trust me, it'll really help you. Uh, remember sometimes we just hear it uh, kind of comes in and goes out but when we hear it we look at something and we're actually following along and filling in it really will help with uh, the amount of information that you can retain remember if you've got questions uh, send them to me uh, there at the email address I'd be glad to help you if today's discussion or any of the others um, brings up questions in your heart in your mind uh, so let us know all right so let's get started here we go father in jesus name give us understanding as we study your word uh, together today in jesus name amen amen so this one is session number two again it is called how do i talk to god all right so really this is called prayer um, uh, and this is how we talk with god how we talk to God which quite honestly is an amazing thing if you stop and think about it that the creator of the universe um, allows us or we are allowed to talk with him it's an amazing thing and so uh, it's still mind-blowing to me that we can talk with God this is powerful this is something that as you get started in this adventure with Christ you're gonna to wanna to be practicing this and doing this and walking in this so we're gonna kinda of, uh, go over some things related to prayer hopefully answer a bunch of questions uh, that uh, might come up with it and uh, go from there so let's look at look at your paper and uh, so what is prayer it's one of those things obviously maybe you've, you've heard of that I've heard of that everyone's heard of that but what really what is it um, at the top there uh, of this session we were created to have here's the first blank fellowship and communion with God he created us for fellowship and communion with him in other words uh, he wants to interact with you his kid his child and he wants to talk with us and so prayer is simply our method of communicating here's the second blank and this is huge because it's communicating with God communicating with God um, it, it, it is and it is absolutely necessary to every relationship uh, that a believer has with Christ I mean communication is one of those things every relationship even um, in our personal relationships if you're gonna have a relationship a healthy relationship there has to be communication same thing is true in the spiritual stuff there has to be uh, healthy communication if there's going to be a relationship and so what you're gonna to want to do uh, is create here's the next blank a habit a habit of talking with God on a regular basis how do you start any sort of habit you just get started and then you do it again and you do it again and you do it again and eventually what happens is it becomes a habit this is one of those good habits that you and I to have a good relationship with God um, uh, that we need to get go get going to have to to start up and so um, this habit of communicating with God next section says why so why should I pray well first off the Bible tells us to and there's a verse that I put right there on your paper first Thessalonians 5 5 17 and it says to pray without ceasing pray without ceasing second reason that we should pray is because Jesus did and of course we are followers of Jesus Christ that means we we want to do what he did and so we look at him in his life even here on earth 
um, as an example, as a model. Mark 1 uh, tells us that it says, Now in the morning, having risen a long while before the daylight, he went out and he departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. And it's talking about Jesus. And so if Jesus needed to pray, if Jesus wanted to pray, then how much more for us is prayer an important, necessary part? of this relationship with God. Third reason is that prayer does change things. All right, Acts chapter uh, 12, um, there is this story. I won't take the time to, to read it to you, um, but uh, I want you to, uh, to begin to practice uh, opening your Bible and finding uh, these things and looking them up and reading them. Now, if you don't know where Acts is, in the front of your Bible, there is always uh, like uh, uh, an index and there's a page that tells you, a contents page, uh, that tells you where the books of the Bible are and what page they're on. And it is, uh, it is all, just use that and find out where the book of Acts is. It's in the, uh, it is in the, the, uh, the New Testament, yeah, Acts chapter 12. All right, and you find that and you just begin to read there. And it tells us this story. And here's what the story is uh, the Apostle Peter was in prison uh, for preaching Jesus, by the way. And what was the church doing while he was in prison? They had to gather together in someone's home and they were praying, they were asking God um, to help Peter, to set him free. And the, that, that, uh, uh, account in scripture talks about how uh, God supernaturally got Peter out of that situation, out of prison. He actually shows up at the door of the people that are praying for him. And so um, that's the third thing uh, that uh, in, the, in the asking of the question, why? Why should I pray? Because prayer does change things. We're talking to the creator of the universe about whatever the situation is, all right? The fourth thing is the top of the next page. God loves, he loves to talk with his kids. Just like any parent, we love to talk with our kids. But he is not in need of, here's the blank, information, all right? So in other words, sometimes um, we might think, well, I gotta tell God this and tell God that. Um, he is not in need of information. He knows everything already, but he just loves to talk with us, right? If you've ever had a, a little kid, maybe a toddler who just loves to talk and they go do something and, and a parent just loves, it. it's not like the parent is looking for information like, oh, I need to know all this stuff. It's just, oh, I just love talking with my kid. And how much more with God? He loves to talk with his kids. Matthew 6, 8, for your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask him, right? So he already knows everything going on in our life, and he knows everything that we need, and yet he still wants to talk with us. He wants to, to, to have time with us. Really what it's all about is relationship. And again, communication is the key to uh, relationship. And so that's what it becomes all about. Relationship. God wants a relationship with you, his kid. Amazing stuff. Okay, when should I pray? So we read this earlier, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. It says to pray without ceasing, which kind of sounds impossible actually, right? I mean, how in the world am I supposed to pray all of the time? Well, let me just tell you some things about prayer, uh, because prayer can happen anywhere. It doesn't just happen at church. It doesn't just happen at the end of the day. You know, we kind of picture somebody kneeling down at their bed. Um, prayer can happen anywhere. It can happen anytime. Uh, it can be out loud, for sure, or it can be in your thoughts. That's the blank. It can be in your thoughts. God, this is kind of an interesting thing to think about, God knows our thoughts. Wow, I mean, that can be kind of a scary thought maybe, but God knows our thoughts. So you can talk to him anywhere, anytime throughout the day, and you can do that in your thoughts. You don't have to bend down and bow down and, and, uh, and do all of that. Listen, you don't even have to close your eyes, by the way. The Bible doesn't say that we have to close our eyes when we pray. Well, so why do we do it? 
because we are easily distracted people, right? And so uh, that's why we close our eyes. But you don't have to close your eyes. Listen, you can pray when you're driving, and you certainly should not close your eyes when you are, are, are driving and praying. So you don't have to do it that way. There's a lot of forms that we think, oh, this is the way it's only ever done. But that, that's not the thing. So we can pray without ceasing. You can pray while you're at work. You can pray when you're driving. Uh, you, can, you can pray anytime, anywhere uh, that you want to pray. So the question comes, how? So a lot of people know about the Lord's Prayer, right? It's Matthew uh, chapter 6. You can turn there if you want, uh, and you need to be start practicing this. We'll do more of this next week. But Matthew, okay, it's the first book in the New Testament, and we're going to chapter 6, okay? And we're going to read a few verses here, beginning with verse 9. And this is the Lord's Prayer. Probably uh, it's, you may have heard of it, and it's, it's well known. Um, and this is Jesus speaking, okay? And here's what he says. He's talking to his disciples, and that, of course, now includes you and I. And he tells them, verse 9, pray then like this. First thing, I want you to know that this is a model prayer. That's the blank. It's a model prayer. Now, it's okay to say these words and recite these words, but this is not like, oh, when I pray, I have to say those words. It's a model uh, for uh, that Jesus is saying, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, right? It's the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer. So here's some of the ingredients. If it's a model, we look to it and go, okay, there's some things in here that should be involved in my prayer life when I'm talking with God. And the first thing, if you notice, is praise. And by that, I mean, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. See, that's praise. Take the time, here's the blank, to thank God for all that he's done, for, for, for who he is, and tell him how grateful you are for saving you, for forgiving you of your sin, grateful for uh, life. I mean, just think of things, but prayer is not just rattling off a list like a boom, 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 I want this, want this, want this, want this, help, 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 but take time to thank God for what he has done, what he's doing. Um, the second thing is ask. It is all right to ask. He wants us to ask. All right? Ask for help. That's the blank. Ask for help. We all need help, especially from God. Ask for help. Ask for guidance in anything uh, that you're dealing with and going through. Listen, God already knows what you're going through, but he wants to talk with you about it anyway. So ask him for help. Here's the next thing involved in the Lord's Prayer. It's confess. Now, remember last time we talked about confess. It means to admit so confess your sin to God. Ask God to for, forgive you of your sin. Maybe uh, some things that you did or thought or, or motives or something. Um, uh, confess your sin to God in your prayer time. God, I, I messed up again and I ask you, God, to forgive me of my sin. Right? Ask him to help you to overcome whatever the sin is. God, I, I did that again and God, I'm asking you to forgive me. But I'm also asking you to help me to not do it again. But, notice there, but it also says we have to be in the business of forgiving others also. We'll talk about forgiveness at another time, but um, uh, it's got to be a part of our prayer life that we're asking for forgiveness right along with forgiving other people. What else is involved? Protection. Protection is involved in the Lord's Prayer. God, uh, keep us safe. It's, ask God. God, help us. Keep us safe. Um, that's, a, that's a great thing. Faith is involved. Believing that he is the source. That's the blank. He is the source of everything that I need and that you need. And believing that he will do it. In other words, prayer is us acknowledging the creator. We're going to him. We're talking with him. We're asking him for, for, for everything that we need and protection. Listen, when we pray... 
Um, there doesn't have to be fancy words. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to use a lot of Christian-y words or any of that. Just be yourself. God loves you like you are. Be yourself. You don't have to come up with, oh, what's the right biblical sounding words and all of that. Just be yourself. Just talk to God. Here's a, a kind of an important thing. Uh, Matthew 6, 7 at the bottom of the page, it says, And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Vain repetitions. What's a vain uh, repetition? I'll put an example there for you. In the Catholic faith, um, there is a prayer. It's called the Hail Mary. And they just recite it over and over and over and over again. Hail Mary. And they just keep... Uh, and it becomes a vain repetition. Vain kind of just means useless. In other words, it just loses its meaning. We just repeat it, repeat it, and we've lost the meaning. Some people do that with the Lord's Prayer. They just repeat it and they recite it. There's no thought to it. There's no meaning to it. It's just they're trying to recite it because they think God wants to hear that. Um, so, and just repeating it and a whole lot. Of, it doesn't have to be a lot of words. It doesn't have to be religious words. Just be yourself and talk to him top of the next page. God is not a genie. A genie, that's the blank. So don't treat him like that. Don't treat him like the genie. You, know, you rub it and you get three wishes. And, and some people, that's what they do in their prayer life. Don't, that, that's not what prayer is about, where God, God, uh, I wish for this and this and this. God, help me, give me this, give me this, give me this. That's, that's not what prayer is. It's communication. And it's, now watch now, two-way communication. Communication is vital for every relationship, but it's got to be two-way. So remember, prayer is talking with God, not just, and here, these are the blanks, it's with God, not just to God. So what does that mean? we got to take the time to listen. Now, uh, soon we'll be talking about how to hear from God. We won't do that today, but probably in the next one. How that? So if we're going to listen, well, how do I hear from God? Listen, it is possible to hear from God. And I'll tell you how next session. But it's two-way. So don't just rattle off everything you need and you want and help me, help me. And get, okay, and then I'm off to work. Take the time to listen to God, to listen to him. So still talking about prayer. Who should I pray for? In the book of 1 Timothy, and uh, we'll turn there. If you've got that, 1 Timothy, it's towards the back of your Bible. Uh, 1 Timothy, and there is a 2 Timothy, but we're going to 1 Timothy chapter 2. I'm just going to read the first uh, two verses. It said, first of all, then, I urge you that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people or everyone. Verse 2 says, For kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead peaceful and quiet, godly uh, lives, dignified in every way. So who do I pray for? Well, this verse, these two verses, give us three specific groups. And the first one is very broad. It's everyone. God says pray for everyone. So sometimes when we're praying, again, it's not just all about me. I'm not just praying for myself. Pray for other people. Ask God to help and bless and protect other people. And sometimes God will bring people to your mind. Pray for them. Maybe you know somebody that's sick. Pray for them. Pray for everyone. And then it says kings and authorities. So uh, we are praying for those in authority over us. Uh, pray for the president. Pray for judges. Pray for the governor. Pray for your pastor. Pray for whoever might be in authority. Pray. Watch this. Pray for your boss at your work. Pray for them. Luke 6, 28, the next one, tells us that we are to pray for our enemies. Wow, that, that right there requires the help of God. God, what do you mean? Uh, and I don't, I don't mean, by the way, pray that God will strike them with lightning or something. Um, pray for your enemies. This is, this is an amazing thing. God says we're not to curse our enemies or speak bad. We're, we're to pray for them right? Pray for your enemies. Now, there's a, a verse right there about that, Matthew 5, 44. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, uh, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. 
wow, I mean, that requires God. I need help. I don't know how to do that. I, I don't even want to do that. But God changes the desires of our heart. And so we're not spiteful and we don't want to have to spiteful, you know, go back at somebody who did that to us. We're going to pray for them. We're going to love them. We're going to do good to them. When we pray, what does God promise us? Let me give you a few of them here. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. He promises us answers, by the way, to tell us things. Awesome. Hebrews 4, 16. Uh, it tells us that we can come boldly and confidently uh, before the throne of God. Some people say, oh my word, I've done such terrible things. I can't, I can't go talk to God. No, remember, it's because of Jesus, that's the blank, that we can come before the throne of God. He is not mad at you. A lot of people, are, oh my word, God is so mad at me. I can't show my face. He, he loves you and he wants to talk with you, right? You're his kid. A couple of things that are important to know. Conditions to answered prayer. So the first one, who do we pray to? Well, we, we, we just saw it there in the Lord's Prayer. We pray to the Father in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. In whose name do we pray? We pray in Jesus' name. Often that's the way we close a prayer and we say, in Jesus' name. So in other words, we're coming before the Father in heaven, not in like who we are. We're coming because of Jesus. So in Jesus' name I pray. Matthew 6, 5 to 7 says not to pray to put on a show. Uh, how, how spiritual I am. I, not for show to be seen or heard by other people. Uh, it's, not a, it's not about that. And God knows actually the motive of our heart. The next one says that we are to pray according to his will. Right? According to his will, not our will. That's why they said, um, uh, your, your kingdom come, your will be done. We'll talk more at a different time about, well, how do you even know what the will of God is? Because it is possible to know the will of God. There at the bottom, things that can hinder my prayers. And there are some things that can hinder our prayers. And the first one out of Psalm 66 says, cherished sin. That's the blank. Sin. Cherished sin. What is that? It's in other words, I know I have this sin in my life and I like it. I love it. I know it's wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. But I still am going to approach God as if that's no big deal. That will hinder your prayers. James 4, wrong motives. Like God knows the motive of, of, my, of my heart and why I'm asking and, and why I'm praying. God knows the motive. So we got to keep our motives straight before God. The last one there, James 1, says doubt, right? He who asks and doubts shouldn't think he would receive anything from the Lord, it says in there. You should go read these verses, by the way. I put them there. I'm not turning to them for the sake of time, but you should go through these and read these so you see what God has to say about prayer. So he, he says, if you're praying, then don't doubt. Don't be like, oh God, I ask you to, but I, yeah, you're probably not gonna. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. I pray, God, that they would get better and, and you would heal them. Yeah, but that's probably not going to happen. No, don't do that. God, I believe you. So I'm talking to the Creator. So have faith. Believe. On the top of the next page, this is like little homework. All right? It's kind of a, a matching thing. And you can, you can do that on your own. Uh, but make sure you do it. Follow through with this stuff. Remember, be consistent. Put in the work. And it will produce for you in your life. This is not something just, eh, whatever. Uh, go see what the scripture says and connect those things. Four essentials to prayer. Again, we already said this, but the first is God's will. God's will is revealed where? In his word. What's his word? The Bible. We can find the will of God in the Bible. The second thing is faith. So what's faith? Faith is believing what God said is true. In other words, God, I believe you. That's faith. Watch. The Bible actually tells us that our faith will grow as we get to know him and his word. So even as we read the Bible, which we're going to talk about next time, your faith will grow. It's, it's, there's an amazing connection there. 
the next thing, the third thing is patience. Some people say, oh, you only have to say it one time. Well, yeah, God hears us the first time, but sometimes God um, requires us to be persistent in our prayer. So keep praying, keep believing. Uh, there's a story there called The Persistent Widow. You should look it up and read it um, and, uh, and be patient. It's not like, hey, I'm going to snap my fingers. God, you better do it by such and such a time. That's not how it is. The fourth one is that we've got to come into prayer as we're asking, willing to hear the answer no. Don't presume to know what is best because uh, um, God knows what's best. And so sometimes if we're asking something, God knows if it's the best thing. And so maybe we're asking for a certain thing and the answer is actually no. And he doesn't give it to us. Why? Because he loves us and he knows what's best. Next section, personal application. So here, here's what a good thing to do. You should pick a set time. That's the blank. A set time every single day. Now remember, we're, we can pray anytime, anywhere, all through the day, but there should be a set time every day to talk with God. Like I'm going to give a little bit of time um, uh, and, and I'm going to do this. Now start just with a short time. It doesn't have to be three hours. It doesn't, doesn't have to be one hour. Just take a little bit of time and then you can let that time grow as you can and as you have time um, and uh, uh, that you can, you can talk with him. You say, I don't have time for that. Listen, this is, these are some things that are called spiritual disciplines, by the way. Prayer is one of them that you and I need to make the time. It is so important that you need to make the time right? Best time, by the way, is in the morning. And we're going to talk about devotions next time we get together. But in the morning, before your day starts, so maybe you need to get up a little earlier. Well, how do you do that? You go to bed a little earlier. How do you do that? You turn off the TV or the computer a little earlier so that so those things can happen. So you can make the time in your life because we all, listen, we all make the time for the things that are important to us. We're all busy, but we make the time for the things we love and the things that we make important. So make the time for this. It is, it, you won't regret it. Some topics there um, about prayer just to kind of help you get started. Uh, pray for your family, your friends, but don't forget to pray for your enemies. Pray for the government. Pray for your president. Pray for leaders. Uh, regardless of whether you, you like the, all their opinions or not, pray for them. Right? Pray for them. Pray for your church family. Pray for your pastor. Unsaved people, you know. Listen, it's God's will that people give their heart to Jesus Christ. So you know that you're praying in the will of God when you're praying, God, my friend at work or or somebody in my family, they don't know you yet. They're not born again yet. Pray for their salvation. Uh, pray for personal needs of your own life or your family or people that you know, people that are sick, people's marriages, people's finances, whatever it is. Pray for people uh, about what they need. And, and then go ahead and pray some verses of the Bible. This is an amazing thing to do. Colossians, I put one there. And kind of insert yourself right there. Now, those verses aren't all about us, but we kind of insert so we, we, we kind of realize that that, that I'm a part of what God is trying to do and trying to speak to me. And so we can kind of pray some of those things. This stuff is, is so important. Remember, I said this is, this is still mind-blowing to me. I've been saved for a lot of years now, but the privilege and the honor to be able to talk with God is, I mean, it is just amazing. Um, don't miss it. Don't, don't, don't miss making this a habit. Um, it just just do what you need to do to begin to talk with God. And there at the bottom, I just said, you need to remember, He loves you. He does love you. Remember, He loved you with the perfect love by sending His Son to die for you, to die for me. He loves you, and He loves to talk with His children. You are one of His children. So talk with Him. But take the time to listen. Let's close in prayer. Here we go. We're going to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you that we can come and talk to you. How cool is that? God, we, 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 we can talk with the Creator. We can talk with the God who knows everything. And so, God, we thank you for your word. And I pray that your blessing over those that are listening. God, help them. 
to put this into practice. Remember, Lord God, we're not just listening for knowledge sake. We're going to do it. We're going to do your word. So I pray for courage and I pray for just the will to, to begin to create this habit of prayer. And I thank you for the honor that is ours to be able to talk to you in Jesus name. Amen. By the way, that, that closing in Jesus name, amen, simply means let it be done. Let it be so. And in Jesus name is the stamp of authority over what we just prayed. Because we're not, it's not in my name. It's in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Thank you for being consistent. If you got questions, send them to us. God bless you.